Hello, Augies Worldwide. I'm Dave Kassler, amateur radio call sign KE0OG, here with another episode of Ask Dave. Today, we're going to take a look at QuartzFest 2022, which my wife and I attended in the month of uh, January. And I want to tell you a little bit about QuartzFest, a bunch of pictures, a little glimpse of video, and so on. We had a grand time, although it was colder than usual and certainly windier. So let's take a look. Here's the logo from the QuartzFest website. Uh, and you can see already it involves RVs, desert camping, and so on. Let's take a look at it. QuartzFest is an annual week-long ham fest held in January, the end of January, in the Arizona Sonora Desert near Quartzite, Arizona, with no fees, although donations are okay to the system. It's held on BLM land, and it's free dry camping. It means there's no water, no electricity, no place to uh, dump. Uh, I mean, you're on your own out there. In the RV world, that is called boondocking. And uh, this is actually a few miles south of Quartzsite, about six miles. Uh, it has the usual ham fest items, such as presentations, the ARRL forum, uh, which was for the section and also for the state of Arizona, uh, Swap Fest, DX competitions, and so on. It, had a, it has other features uh, not usually found at a ham fest. Uh, food, there was a potluck dinner, uh, music, a hootenanny, off-topic presentations such as RV-related or um, using your metal detector, whatever. There was a four-wheel drive trip that everybody could go on, and uh, evening presentations and a, a movie. And, of course, gab, 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 gab. This is where it is. Okay, here's the Phoenix area. Los Angeles is way off over here. This is Blythe, California, and Quartzite right here, um, as you can see in here, has uh, exit 17 and 19, so it's only 20 minutes or so from Blythe. Now, Quartzite itself is absolutely jammed with people taking advantage of the free boondocking. There are two types of areas run by the BLM, one for long-term or for short-term camping. The long-term camping costs you about $180 or so, and you can stay there the whole winter, I think up to five or six months, okay? The town of Quartzsite itself has an annual year-round population of around uh, 3,500 to 4,000 4, people. Now, um, of course, it grows tremendously with these other people in town, and getting services in Quartzsite during the months where people are, uh, the snowbirds are down here boondocking, it's really hard to get services in there. Uh, now, there are some. Uh, there's, of course, gasoline, water, place to dump, things like that, uh, that are all available there for a fee. If you want a less hectic environment, you can just drive the 20 minutes into Blythe and uh, get any services that you want. Okay, let's start our photographs. Well, this can't be right. No, no, no. We've got to have some background noise. We are in the desert, and here we go. Okay, this is the Roadrunner, which is a 14-day free area. You can stay here 14 days for free. After that 14 days, you need to either go find a different 14-day site or go into one of the long-term facilities. Right at the entrance to this is the sign that welcomes you the Quartz Fest sign in at the uh, Welcome Center. They're very well organized. This is the center of the world for Quartz Fest. The blue tent is the sign in tent, and these sign boards, which notice are put on pieces of wood stuck into the ground so that uh, they won't fall over uh, in the wind, um, have the latest schedule and info on activities. You'll notice a couple generators running under here. These provide power for the PA systems and uh, all that sort of thing, plus uh, the uh, trailers uh, or uh, RVs that are used by the principals of the camp. 
over here they have bulletins, they've got sort of ads for different types of activities and so on. And on the back of these, you can post messages for other people. Okay, this inside is what you find. Vicky K7VSD welcomes you, signs you in, gives you your raffle ticket, which is very important for the last day. Um, and signs you up for services and does it all with a smile. This right here is the main woman, Chris KR1SS. She is the top in command. Here she watches over the flyers available and hands out some uh, ICOM swag. In this case, pink. My wife uh, got herself a pink hat. They do post on the board the various activities. Note that they have one two and three areas. Now they did not have tents this year because of the COVID thing. So everybody's outside, which meant no on-screen presentations during the day. In area three at night, they have a screen set up where they can do uh, presentations. I attended an excellent one on some of the World War II activities that took place in the courtside area. I didn't realize that courtside at one point had two airfields. It has zero right now. So the daily schedule, um, happy hour, which you see right here in area one, which is the one with the big campfire, is the daily all camp gathering for news and for raffle drawings. Uh, they hand out daily raffle tickets at the event and then they give away uh, quite a few things. Uh, just, let's just take a look at some of the activities. A hike to Cunningham Peak to do a summits on the air activity. Okay, a distance challenge, which was all day. Um, you put up your radio and see how far from Quartzsite, Arizona you can get. And uh, people were getting things like South Africa and so on. So some very, very long ones. A solar walkabout is for those who have uh, solar panels to power their RV uh, systems and their various uh, radios and so on. So if you're interested in solar, you can do that. Land ops, mini ops, let's see, e-bikes, choosing and using. Uh, troubleshooting for the non-techie ham. Pico ballooning, this is a real fun one here that Brian put on. Uh, pico ballooning is taking like a party balloon and then making a, a whisper transmitter um, that can hang from it that's less than an ounce and it uh, usually operates on 20 meters. These things can get up over 40,000 feet and under the right circumstances can actually circle the world. They usually don't last all that long. Uh, this one with uh, Michael here, W4OPS, uh, is a discussion about enjoying uh, Potter or parks on the air. And then our hootenanny, gotta have a hootenanny, right? CW, metal detecting, all kinds of things going on. This is the head table at the official beginning. There's Chris right there, who is the master of ceremonies. This radio right here is an old Yesu FT-101, I think, double E. It has I believe the digital readout. Um, and the old uh, lollipop style microphone, this was given away. It took them a little while, a few tries, but uh, somebody in the crowd was finally willing to take it. You can see here the tickets uh, for the day's uh, raffle. Okay, that was the official beginning. Of course, there are lots of people there and you need to bring your own camp chairs because uh, as you see down here, all the pebbles and everything, this is what is called desert pavement. Um, some naturalists call it cryptobiotic soil. I think desert pavement's a better idea. Uh, the dust here is blown away by the wind, leaving these pebbles right here uh, as the floor. And you bring whatever uh, chair you want to bring. I brought a couple chairs over because my wife and I sat for a couple events and um, I just left them 
in Area 1, and then whenever I needed them, I'd go get them. Because it was a little bit of a walk uh, back to the trailer, which is back over in that area. Now, they had a special event station, W7Q, for Quartz Fest. That's their special event station. And uh, here's a look at the inside of it. It's the uh, Northern Arizona DX Association that uh, puts this together. This is their trailer. Uh, they had a little um, ICOM 7300 set up, and this was their antenna, so they actually had a beam antenna. Here's a uh, dipole right there, and then you had this for 20, uh, 15, and 10. And uh, this was on the air basically anytime anybody wanted to operate it. Now, solar is a big deal in the RV industry because this can replace generators. And one of the things that you hear in the background is lots of generator noise. This is uh, an antenna type that's actually pretty common and was working very well for quite a number of people. Here's Chris at the potluck. She is the one who uh, puts everything together. Quite a massive undertaking to do that. Uh, here are other people enjoying a little bit at the potluck. I will admit I grabbed a piece of uh, uh, apple pie and more at the potluck there. And of course, as part of any ham fest, there have got to be presentations. So here is one of the presentations that's being given. Now note that you can have little practical demonstrations, but there's no shade or anything to project slides. Uh, just a glance at the crowd and you can see RVs all over the place. Actually takes up quite a bit of space, many acres. Um, and if you aren't careful, you end up uh, hiking quite a bit. Our first time to Quartzite, we parked right by this passageway right here and got a lot of dust and uh, people traveling by at all hours of the night. So we park in a different spot now last year and uh, not last year, the year before. It wasn't uh, uh, officially held last year. It was some people gathered, but it wasn't an official Quartz Fest. They called it a Quartz Pod. Now here's a presentation uh, being given on POTA, Parks on the Air, uh, by uh, Mike, W4OPS, and I thought it was an excellent presentation. And see, he's got a little flag there, he's got everything out here, all his practical stuff that he could show everybody. And uh, I went up to him afterwards just to congratulate him on an excellent program, and he hugged me. He says, I meet KE0OG at last. I was a little taken aback, but if he's a hugger, fine. That's fine by me. Now, we ran into a little bit of a problem on Thursday. Uh, we ran out of water. We had 50 gallons of water, and it was not enough to last us for the whole week. So we went into town with six, I'm sorry, four six and a half gallon uh, water containers and so that all together was about 25 gallons of water which was um, in, enough to get us through the rest of it. The problem was that I can't hold up a water container to dump it into a little tiny hole on the side of the RV anymore. Uh, each one of those water containers weighed about 50 pounds. So we went, we searched Quartzite for this little water pump. This is a potable water pump, one gallon per minute, uh, 12 volt DC, kind of a standard sort of thing that you find in RVs uh, to pump water in and out. It will do potable water. Uh, but it just had the two bare leads on it. I needed an Anderson power pole connector to attach to 12 volt DC. And here was my 12 volt DC source. This is a uh, in, impulse electronics model DC 12 Mighty Go Box model T415. And so this is where you plug in your solar panel, you plug in to get 12 volts out here. Of course, it's 13 because it's actually a, a lithium ion battery inside. This is a standard cigarette lighter type plug. And here is a Class C. Um, connector to charge your phone or a standard old uh, USB. 
this. So this is USB-C, this is a standard USB. In theory, it's 3.0. These are supposed to have some interactive type activity with the power supply to get more uh, power out to them. But I needed this connection here. I needed this plug right here, and I did not have one with me. So I went to some of our next door neighbors and I want to show you those people. Uh, they're quite uh, the luminaries in their own right and uh, let them talk for themselves. Jerry recording. All right, I'm Jerry Ellsworth, uh, AI6TK. My YouTube channel is Jerry Ellsworth, pretty easy to find. You can find me on Twitter as well. Okay. I'm Amy Herndon, AI6ZU. I don't have a YouTube channel. Well, I kind of do, but I'm, I'm not doing anything with it. But I am on Twitter, and it's at AmyH70. Right, and what is this piece of equipment? And if you didn't come to Quartzsite, you missed out on the best treasure at the swap meet. A nice vintage grid dip meter. And who'd you get it from? I got it from Randy, K7AGE. <laughs> so from his garage to mine. There you go. There you go. Well, thank you very much. Yes, thank you, 73. Right. Of course, there was a hootenanny. Now, one of the problems that you have with the hootenanny is that it's music. And if you put this in a YouTube video, somebody's going to call you out on copyright. Plus, one of the members here was is a member of um, the Screen Artist Guild. And so, uh, you know, there's, oh, you get into all kinds of legal type stuff. So I can't bring you very much of the hootenanny, but just a very short a uh, little uh, sampling of it. But no stone at my head, and no flowers in my tomb, no gold plated sign on a marble pillar. There's one thing I want when they lay me in the ground. When I die, oh, tear my steel house down. And then, this was on the last day, ARRL Southwestern Division Director Richard Norton in 6AA is conducting the division uh, forum right here. In a typical type forum type thing, he'd say a few things, ask for feedback and so on. Note that the ham uh, man of 2022, where everybody's putting their call sign on it, this goes in the fire on Friday night. And then this is the closing ceremony uh, with many, many prizes to be had. I mean many. Now for the distance challenges that they had, they had these little hats, they're kind of wild. Uh, and then these sacks came from Heil uh, and contain microphones and other goodies like that. Some of these other things were supposed to be given away with the DX contest, but were given away separately just because there were so many of it. I happened to win this one. It's an MFJ1164B AC RFI line filter right there, and I will review that in an upcoming video. Here are some little MFJ clocks. Uh, here are a couple of uh, Alfang handhelds. And here are a couple of ICOM handhelds. And there, there are just so many different things. This is the um, donation jar for Quartz Fest, not for the BLM, but for Quartz Fest. And this is how um, they managed to keep this thing going. There are expenses associated with all of these things putting this together. So there was our a week at Quartz Fest. We had a, a good time. Uh, we had a little problem when we went down there. It turns out that when we had been to Moab in December over Christmas, uh, we came back and let the camper and truck sit for a couple days while we just unloaded and unwound. Uh, and that was a very bad mistake. We did not connect the electrical to the trailer. And unfortunately, the trailer does have some continuing minor loads and it drained the batteries and uh, they froze. Uh, if you have a fully charged battery, the electrolyte is sulfuric acid and it will stay uh, liquid down to about minus 40 degrees uh, Fahrenheit, at least minus 20. 
Uh, however, if the battery is fully discharged, the electrolyte actually turns into just plain old water. And water will freeze at 32 degrees, which it did, ruining the batteries. So uh, we had that little problem. Uh, first thing we had to do was go find some replacement batteries. Well, Quartzfest is one of those areas absolutely full of RVers and therefore full of people who provide services for RVs. And we managed to pick up a couple interstate batteries at uh, a place that had them, our second the second place we stopped uh, that had them. Got them, took them back to the site, put them in, they've been working fine. Turns out that the RV uh, battery charger doesn't go above about 13.6 volts. It really needs to go up to about 14.1 volt to really charge those batteries, but I don't know, I'll have to figure that out later. So we had a good time. Um, we went down, we stayed in Holbrook, so it was a two-day trip to get there, and on the way back, uh, we stayed at Whitman, where Loretta has a cousin. And while there, I had the opportunity to meet Kevin Weatherwilt, who is my, I probably pronounced that wrong, I'm sure, who uh, was my instructor when I got the airplane two years ago. And uh, we had a good discussion about a few little quirks uh, that we found about the airplane, like how to land it without a clunk, uh, because it is a very light airplane. It wants to just fall to the ground. So uh, he told me how to fix that, and I'm going to be testing that out tomorrow. So um, we then uh, went from there and stayed in um, Prescott, and then went up to Cortez, stayed the night there. Uh, while in Cortez, we winterized uh, the RV, uh, drained the freshwater tank, um, and went up over the hill, um, over <laughs> ice packed, there's ice and packed snow uh, to home, got home to about six inches of snow. And immediately, first thing we did was connect the electrical so we don't make that mistake again of letting those batteries run down. So there you have it. That was our experience at Quartzfest. Uh, it's a very laid back kind of thing. It's a whole week long. A lot of ham fest are just three days. This was a whole seven days long, very laid back. Maybe this next year I'll volunteer to make a presentation of some sort. So there you have it. If you would like to help support this channel so I can bring these events to you like this, uh, go to decastlercom support. If uh, you like this channel, please subscribe and uh, please click like and so that you can get a notification of the videos. If you just subscribe but don't click like, um, they'll hold that for you on the YouTube homepage and you can look at them at any time. And until we next meet, 73. Every night.